Hello, good morning everyone, episode 17, thank you for being here. Incredible, incredible shift, people are waking up, people I wouldn't have thought of waking up, people that are asleep still that I thought would have woken up are still asleep, it's just more and more surprises, I enjoy being surprised, even though there's uh, disappointment I guess, not disappointment, I'm not surprised, <laughs> what am I saying? I am, I'm just so thankful to be here. And all of it is teaching me so much. It's such a perspective. Um, a lot of the same themes are coming in with the people I'm working with around um, sexual energy, sexual power, sexual exchange, um, expectations in relationships. Toltecs say that women will be the ones to determine the, the way, the direction of things when they stop handing their power over to men. Uh, then the men will listen to, to um, their gnosis. Women are naturally in the know, right? Because men climb to the top of this pyramid of knowledge and they stand on the top and they say I've spent my life learning and this is who I am and I'm a student and you know whether it's martial arts or that's their capacities that's their their appointed energy women are the opposite this is constant knowing no need to to, to know anything it's it's already there nothing to do therefore there's no direction which makes it hard for women to achieve purpose because they're trying to copy purpose from a man. Once women understand their power that it's here and they stop trying to learn how to have purpose like a man, everything changes. They'll stop handing their power over to males. They'll access their power through the portal that they have, that we don't, that men don't. And they will guide humanity into a more harmonious and beautiful, holistic trajectory. But it starts here in the hard place of the relationship with your partner or with your children or with your dad. Your wounds are tied to not receiving affection as a child when you needed it. A baby will die if it doesn't receive affection certain amount of time luckily if they're placed on the earth the earth mother will provide that affection for them we as beautiful abstract beings need to reclaim our power allow our sexual energy to become dreaming energy and and then we won't be at odds with whether or not like we're getting laid or not or whether or not our partner is looking at us in a certain way or so this need to be seen this need to be desired this need to be attractive this need to be um, have a certain body type this need to change for somebody else um, all of that will have to be let go in order to move into harmony and people have done this so it's doable and the, there's a collective energy that's making that more possible for each one of us it makes it easier for me and for you the more people do this um, eventually you you won't be at odds with how people perceive you you literally could stand naked in a room and not care carlos castaneda had his male students fight each other naked in front of all the female apprentices <laughs> or train in martial arts spar not fight but pretty intense combat training um it's just you know we have to get mature we have to understand our sexual energy is our power your essence your your semen your juices that's your that's your luminosity it's extension of your luminosity it's meant to be cared for in a very particular way and so lovemaking is a powerful tool to heal each other. But it's also a powerful way to, to kill each other, essentially, by maintaining this like mortal dagger 
in which you're just basically bleeding each other out by just like expecting each other to put out for each other and it's just like super codependent deal then you go to sleep at night and your dreams are sex based and you're getting seduced by somebody else and you feel bad and confused and you're like how to get you out of the carnal fear into the more and not that you don't want to be in your lower chakras that's the problem everyone's trying to escape i want you to integrate i want you to feel your sexual shadow and all the pain that comes with it so that you don't try to escape the wound all my teachers tried to do that and then the schizophrenia showed up through the celibacy um and hijacked this their incredible power the ego will always win unless you are a chess master you got to know what the ego is going to do you got to know long term too you got to listen the decisions you're making now will affect the outcome 20 years from now but at the same time like you know don't take yourself so seriously enjoy your existence let all of this happen naturally don't try to force change just because i'm saying something if you're feeling if you're becoming conscious if you're becoming aware and you want to start stepping into maturity so the junior masculine and junior feminine is basically junior high you're all still operating at your and and me as well at our base junior high feeling level uh, where our adolescence where our first traumas happened in the sexual realm where we were rejected or we weren't seen the way we thought we would be or we had some sort of you know we lost our virginity whatever it was that it may or may not you may or may not understand how traumatizing it was because it felt amazing or i don't know there's just it's weird how it works and your wound is not what you think um so this will get really powerful for those of you that start to take care of your sexual energy in this new way um so the the sorcerer's crossing by Tsaisha Abelar talks about this being in dreaming Flair, by Florinda Donner Grau talks about this it's not in every Castaneda book and um and it's pretty lightly discussed because that was a male apprentice i think or i mean i i don't speculate i know i mean carlos don one fucked with carlos hard about his sexual energy and he would prove to him that he didn't have enough sexual energy or dreaming energy by putting him in situations that would show him where he was at and then he would realize oh my god he didn't talk about it in too much detail but you can speculate on what how this works so um i've talked about this maybe in the past but um your sexual energy level is based on how you were conceived so if you were a product of bored sex you are going to have a harder time building sexual energy up in this world and you're going to get drained from sex more easily than others i don't know why i mean i i know i can see why but it's such a strange thing to talk about uh, if if both of your parents were having an ecstatic experience of spiritual connection and or dual you know climaxing while conception occurred and conception is you know i i felt it when both of my kids were conceived it's and and i i'm the male like i my partner felt it for sure she's very very sensitive um and we had signs and birds and like things showed up and talked to us and guided us and helped us through all of it and we lost our first child to six, at 6 months in the, in the womb, in the womb and that was a dreaming experience for us so she came to us in dreaming and said goodbye it's really powerful really really quite quite a way to start your marriage um and you know we 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 probably well we so I'm surprised we even got through it as a couple for a short period of time and then we, there was challenges that made us made it more difficult to stay together but it it should have separated us forever and in in that it was so painful but after all these years that helper is so strong and and what she was showing us and teaching us through these little dreaming experiences and she came 
multiple times. It was really cool. Um, it just opened that door. And so there's nothing negative about it. It's the reason it's one of the main reasons I have such an incredible heart opened that my heart is as open as it is. So none of these things are negative. I've lost so many powerful connections through death. I know death now in a way that others don't. Um, but then there's those that have had, you know, that are at war and know death on a level that I couldn't ever comprehend. It's, I hope you guys know that there's so many beautiful people in this world and even the ones today that are unconsciously going along with lies and are angry and even hate us for for speaking truth they may very well be our greatest allies when they wake up and heal and so the division that they're trying to create we want to actually not allow it to happen we want to see through it and hold space for all send love to all all the time and that that's challenging right because if you if you get into the details of the story there are those that you wouldn't even be able to be around without throwing up because they are so out of balance and you can see and feel those of us that are sensitive what they do in closed doors so this is hard you guys how do you remain sensitive but gather the capacity to go and and observe these people without being sick to your stomach and not judging them at all and realizing that they are you that we are all in this together and although they've isolated and protected and blockaded themselves into these secret chambers of trillionaire existence where they're insulated you know they are they, they cannot hide from our reflection we will eventually shatter we will show them who they are through the reflection of our perfect mirror we will create crystal clear mirrors and that, that is you you are a mirror when you purify your mirror will change the world there will be enough of us. And, and that is how we move into balance. We There used to be balance. We will return to balance. But there will be a new challenge that will try to take us out of balance. And so we're just going to become really, really knowledgeable about this system. About how things work. How things don't work. It's... Um, it's a lot to look at the sexual shadow the sexual power the uh the exchange that occurs somehow some way each one of us has to have this seed planted in our life where we face these uncomfortable truths and then eventually that seed reaches fertile soil within your being and you start to realize wow this is my only life there's nothing, there's no reason to stay in complacency. And so I encourage you to slowly begin to challenge yourself and your partner to evolve. And maybe listen to this video with your partner if they're, or, or maybe find a, a sexual shadow or a tantra teacher. There's different things. We all have wounds. We're all uncomfortable. You know, we all have armor. Like, a lot of women have so much armor because their expectations because they don't have healthy boundaries and then so they're being sought after sexually and it's not harmonious with you know they're there's there's no beautiful romantic healthy pursuit it's just expected it's boring it's painful really it's leads to pain going against what your body wants leads to pain leads to damage leads to energetic uh, confusion but this, you could do the same thing. You could tell yourself that sex is bad and that celibacy is the only way. And then you, you give in to your passion and then your womb hurts because you did something terrible and you went against your celibacy. That's just you projecting and creating pain for no reason. But then that can lead to an illness. 
because that's how powerful we are. You tell yourself you're doing something bad, creates a little vibration when you do it, when it didn't have to. You didn't have to. You know, I was told that every time I ejaculated, I was, you know, it was like I was going to die. And so I literally felt that way. And then years later, I quit feeling that way. And it, 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 there was not draining to me at all. But I still am, I've learned to, to not ejaculate because of, um, I finally moved out of the carnal fear based program. Finally, after years and years and years and years and years of, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I spent years outside of it and then went back in and, you know, so, I, but I'm in a place now where there's no reason to go back in. I've done the sexual shadow work um, in, in, well, sorry, I, ejaculation is no longer something I have any reason to, to participate in. I, it would have been uh, um, out of balance for me to try to force that though when I was having the type of life and adventures that I was having in the past. Um, at least, you know, I don't perceive things in a linear, dense way, so I'm not at odds with anything I've done. I'm open to how I can go back into the past through recapitulation work and and heal and release particular ways of behavior and memory systems so that my current modern moment is actually transcended i believe in that kind of magic but regret is not a part of that and or do i perceive every time i ejaculated as an as something that cost me energy i don't i don't see it black and white i see it as a really beautiful dance of the shadow and the, and your dreaming body and that it's this is this is rich and if a person doesn't have that dance then how would they gain the experience that they would need in order to be you know truly dynamic right so if it would be cool if a child could be born and not have to go through any challenges to evolve and was just in in gnosis but that's not reality even if we lived in a more holistic system, challenges would absolutely show up. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Um, they would come very strong, right? Different kinds than we have. We have domesticated challenges. If we were born in a more holistic system, we would have more, uh, less domesticated, more like wild, right? It could be more like black elk and you'd be having vision, you'd be fasting and going and, and training with the elders and learning how to see energy. That would be amazing. Your challenges would be immense though. Just like they are here. So don't disregard this system and wish you were in an older one or a newer one. This is it. This is the mood. This is the, this is the, the mood that will allow you to discover yourself if you were here if you were meant to be of another timeline or another mood you would be in it this is the one so a lot of people in my world they just if i could just have a don juan to teach me everything would be fine it's bullshit this is not that time you don't need don juan you don't need and and carol tiggs is still alive you guys so it's it's not like you people aren't they're just so unconscious around how this works. So they're not actually willing to change. They just want some story to sweep them away. And they, they're looking and reading books and thinking, oh, this lucky person, they had this opportunity. No, none of that. You are exactly where you need to be. You're perfectly in place for the contract that you are here to have witness and experience and transcend. You get to be the observer of your struggle rather than be in the struggle and that's where you liberate and perceive and get guided out of the struggle and then so at first it's really scary because you realize if i step into knowledge then i'm going to be self-responsible and i won't be able to hide as a victim of the cabal because you're all addicted to being a victim of something having more power than you but it doesn't 
And so at some point you will meet the creator force through your capacity to step into your power, which is tied to your sexual energy, which is tied to your sexual wounds, which is tied to how you feel about your appearance or how people perceive you. It's also tied to your capacity to feel pleasure, to pleasure yourself, to have an ecstatic connection to source through sexual connection. Because sexual energy and dreaming energy are the same. It's okay to build your sexual energy and enjoy all of what is available. It's a vehicle of travel for your astral being. And then if you can build that sexual energy and then all of a sudden switch it into dreaming or meditation, all that sensuality spills over and you start to perceive everything from such a more dynamic and and powerful place so that's what a witch does a woman quits handing her power over her bed becomes her her chamber her temple her sanctuary she learns to access her own sexual energy solo build it cultivate it know it know her how it's it's a complete discovery process and it's not for somebody else and a healthy partner would want that for her because it leads to the most incredible guidance for the couple. But what happens is usually the man wants in on that action and doesn't want her doing that without him. And then there's no understanding. There's no, there's no balance. And then there's this conflict and it's very difficult to evolve. And it's very difficult for both parties because um, the man can't help but want in on that. That's the most powerful. That's what he's been looking for. Right? So it's, you guys, you're both, you both want the same thing. You just don't know how to communicate. And so if both of you can learn to go all the way over to where the other one is and try to really put yourself in their shoes. And that's where psychedelics can be helpful. Um, I do work with couples in this capacity at times um, depending on the nature of what's going on it's really powerful it's really powerful the healing that can happen so i hope for you to be willing to consider and look at that your sexual energy is your dreaming energy and that this is a dream and so there's no getting around this stuff you guys you can't just focus on only one kind of purification and expect your life to fall into balance. And if you're hermitizing yourself or avoiding challenges, then those challenges will find you. If you're powerful enough to go and hermitize yourself and you do the work that I do, then it won't matter. Uh, there's a man that spent 18 years in solitude. He's the only person I know that has um, actually exited autopilot for a whole 45 minutes. Um, where the flyer didn't have a hold of him. And he said he couldn't walk. He couldn't. I mean, there's. You, you, we are under hypnosis, you guys. Like on such a powerful level that our basics that we think, that we take for granted are all actually, um, they're not, they're not what we think they are at all. So this is really difficult. Toltecs came to to accept that this autopilot program is here to stay. They didn't try to get out of it. They know that there will come a time. And that's the time we're in now. When this autopilot program would, would, would be undone. And so what we're going to go through is an ego death. You will feel it's like a change of the guard. It is. It is. We're absolutely in the change of the guard. So it doesn't mean you won't have another type of autopilot program or hypnosis that sort of shows up here. It's This is a very complicated realm of forces, spiritual warfare that isn't something you can explain by decoding ancient texts. This is something you have to be present to perceive in the now. And even then, to even try to talk about it would, would be insane. But it, when we're posthumous, when we're no longer in this unconscious 
system, we will absolutely get all the information and details that we would ever need to know, but they won't matter anymore because we'll have seen it for ourselves, right? It's like, it's just energy. And total forgiveness and total love occurs when you cross. But the goal is to have that total love and total forgiveness occur prior to your death. Total appreciation for your existence. Full willingness to uh, be a perceiver of, of what you're being asked to perceive. A complete witness of this miracle. And to do that is to have your head turn toward infinity and to perceive it as it's coming towards you rather than ha how you were perceiving it receding. That intensity will cultivate the energy that you need. So you can do this in a dark closet. You can turn off your thoughts, look into the darkness, and eventually the purple will show and it turns into other colors eventually in entire scenes. And then all that scene will spin and turn into lights as if you're in a galaxy and you're traveling through stars. I don't know why or how or what all this is, you guys, but that's just what happens. And anybody that turns off their thoughts basically experiences that same process. And it's so uncomfortable to be without thought at first because you're just so fucking alive. And so the distractions are going to pull on you. You're going to start to understand that you're really being kept in place by yourself. The ego is so capable of making sure that you don't fully get the big picture and that you stay somewhere within the slave realm. That you're still a slave to something. So I've talked about this, but when you become capable of perceiving your energetic condition, you can start to do slave-like things without being a slave. You can start to transition away from that way of behavior by seeking the challenges rather than avoiding them. Pursuing tyranny as a means to, 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 to face the self. So shamans really do and go and seek a job or a position in life that has somebody who has incredible amounts of power over them so that they can learn about the inner workings of what's called controlled folly. And there are these warrior principles that are applied. There is strategy involved. There's patience. There's cunning. There's sweetness and ruthlessness. So the strategy is in part of those but it's it's the whole thing is a strategy and it's patience cunning sweetness and ruthlessness and you have to have all four or you would probably die you got to go in there as a warrior you got to go in there having already learned to work with that elusive force of intent and know how to listen know how to see and know and then yeah, it's really powerful. Then you no longer feel threatened by this world that, that a man or a, a boss or a leader or a Rothschild or any of these people could, could take your center anymore. This is how it makes it possible to go and face some of those more out of balance creatures without being sick to your stomach. And we're going to need to be able to be strong enough to go and face them collectively. You know, and convince... Uh, just basically require that things change, right? And it is, you know, it's going to get crazy. I mean, as they say, they won't be able to walk down the street. There will be human, I mean, they will probably set up gallows on the street and people will be executed in public for what, after what people realize what's been going on all this time. I, I'd prefer that not to happen. I, I believe that there's a, a more holistic way I don't believe in an eye for an eye. Um, this is a dream, and that would be an unconscious act. Um, but at the same time, I'm a warrior, and if somebody's hurting a child, um, then there's an appropriate action that needs to be taken. Um, I don't consider myself capable of being an executor, and therefore I can't ask someone else to execute. I'm not willing to give up my... 
uh, relationship with the afterlife in order to murder someone because they murdered somebody or because they hurt a child. And so I don't know what the solution is if we can't execute these people that hurt people. Um, but I, I think dropping them off in the middle of the wilderness. Yeah, I mean, see, there's no solution other than, you know, some form of I mean, there's always creative ways, right? So if people need to be, if people need to uh, just be kept in a situation in which they can do no harm, but they're kept alive, and it's some sort of blockchain technology, it's not hackable. Um, you know, you could basically allow a person to hermitize the rest of their life with nobody knowing them through a computer automated system. Nobody has to intervene. Um, there's plenty of income for that. It, it's people can be yeah they should be allowed to live the rest of their life regardless i know that sounds crazy but um it's almost more torturous for them to have to live with what they did and then to not have access to their addiction so that's more creative to me that's that's allows us all to move into the next layer of the onion without getting caught up in the details of this pain body and then so we're not creating more karma. So that sobriety to me is, is being realistic and practical. Obviously, you know, th there are not too many people on the planet. That's a misunderstanding. It's just that there are not enough systems established on this in this realm to accommodate a non chaotic condition. But we could we could there's a solution for all these things. People have been working for decades and have absolute and total solutions to a holistic way of being here so that everybody you know has opportunity without creating some sort of communist forced uh, or socialist deal you can still have you know i mean technically anarchy is what will heal us when we realize that we didn't need government we didn't need any of these things we just needed you know um a council of elders and and warriors that you know will stand for the truth and that that council of elders is constantly you know uh, voted in new people based on you know who is speaking the truth these are seers this is this 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 happened for a long time it also went out of balance for a long time. It's not like things are going to be without um, incredible forces at play. The forces will always rise, you guys. It's just that because it's gotten so dystopian so quickly, so will the, the, the more holistic system will come into play. But it's up to the women on, on a lot of levels to intend our evolution. But it's up to us individually to intend our personal evolution. And our relationship with our sexual power, our capacity to be fully sensual without having to overreact, right? So it takes a long time to let your sexual energy build without it sort of having a lot of power over you. It's, it's not an easy task, but it's worth doing because then you... You get to have such a more beautiful connection with your partner. You get, you are no longer, um, it sounds crazy, but you just don't crave sex at all. At all. Like you, you are way more interested in using that energy to travel in your dream time. But when it does surface and it gets strong and incredible, it's a total and it's a total celebration, you know, and you, you, you don't, it's not like, oh, well, I'm celibate and I don't know you allow. I mean, there may be stages in your life where you're guided to be celibate and that's different. You can, you can learn how to breathe and apply that energy to dreaming. But when you're not celibate and you're guided to learn the sexual shadow and whether it's alone or with a partner, 
Um, it's an incredible thing to release shame and guilt and fear around your sexuality. And it's really liberating. And it heals a, a lot of wounds that come from probably times in our childhood that we just don't have much access to. It's really just around like mom and dad and like feeling abandoned because we got left in the room crying. Like that's a wound and it can be a powerful one. Um, as I've talked about, like being left with like my, my grandparents, like I think I was a week old when I was handed over to these people. Um, my parents went to Europe, so I got cut off from the breast milk. All of those things are wounds. It's, it's it, You would think, oh, whatever, you know, but it's actually a pretty significant wound. Um, it's the unconsciousness of leaving your week old baby to go to Europe for three weeks. Like, who does that? Well, my dad had come into money. Um, I think, you know, they tried to schedule something based on his work needs rather than the timing. And, and you know, it was their first. It wasn't his first child, but it was my mom's. Um, anyways, just little things like that. They, they play a, cu a, a huge role in the trajectory of your relationship with attachment. Um, and so... A lot of shamans don't do that kind of work. They don't look at like emotional health and stuff. They just focus on really intense upper chakra things. And then again, like we've talked about, it just it's not a sustainable a way to move forward if they're not willing to face all aspects of themselves. Uh, luckily, we're in a time where everyone's going to be forced to face all of themselves because it's just going to be really difficult. This difficult time we're heading into, though, leads to a most beautiful opportunity and so we all get to hold a really beautiful vision for that um, and and because we're going to hold that we're going to stop projecting the dystopian fear and we're going to start to integrate how beautiful you know a, a utopian not utopian but a, a system that's based on intelligence rather than fear a system that's based on um, on love and support rather than disease you know and profit um so those that are trying to maintain the control matrix are really truly going to start to get sick and suffer the anxiety will get to be too much and the people that are unwilling to look at these truths are going to start to have a difficult time holding their reality together um please don't judge them please don't say oh i told you so motherfucker just um say thank you thank you for being here thank you for your role Toltecs say that all the unconscious ones are here to serve as a buffer for those of us that are using this earth dream realm as a mode of evolutionary intent so the earth mother will give you and i and those that do the work what's called the earth's boost and she will move our perception to places that are so profound uh, that we will be forever touched by her on a level that we can't return from. And then you're, you're locked in. You work for her now because she showed you the relationship. And so you, your affection for her, your willingness to do whatever she asks of you is beyond comprehension. It is the greatest love affair that exists. So when I'm snowboarding through the mountains alone on psychedelics, sun and snow and the guidance, the curves of the mother, she's the most exquisite, sensual being. The way she teaches you about how her body, what her body can offer you in that flow state with the mountain bike, with, the, with your feet, the, the gate of power, you guys, this is real. The earth will literally carry you and show you a much more effective way of travel. When you no longer are afraid of being hurt or dying, then you have nothing to lose. And eventually we will all experience this, whether it's when we die or 
you know, hopefully prior. So being held by her in the darkness of the night and being able to just fully know that your body knows what to do. You're literally running down the side of a mountain at a speed that shouldn't be happening in pitch black and there's nothing fucking like it. Once something like that happens to you, there's no longer a question as to the connection and how it works. And and there's just so much love and affection that occurs when that that unlocks within you. It's like something literally comes out of you. And the joy, the tears that flood out of your being when the events of that nature happen. You don't have to risk your body like I do to have these experiences. It's just that's what helps you realize how magical it is, is that you because you don't get hurt, because you don't even trip or fall or nothing happens, you really start to understand how, how, how that flow state can evolve into what's called the gate of power. Another version of the gate of power is, is to actually shape shift, um, at which, you know, shamans do, they can turn into clouds or animals. Any, any aspect of the earth mother is available to a shaman. It's just their assemblage point moves to a place where that's possible. You have to be taught how to do that. It takes, you know, a very specific level of intensity. You would have to work with a very, very powerful shaman. And they exist, you guys. It's not like they don't exist. It's just that you would, uh, the way that kind of relationships work is that you have to be signed. You're not going to find these people because you, you know, uh, signed up for a workshop. Well, I mean, there are, there, I'll be honest, there are some real shamans that you would never know that, that, that are right there and people are, are disregarding and it's it's awesome they don't care and it's all energy so it's 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 up to you when when you're ready the teacher will arrive um and there will be times when you need to be without a teacher too it's important though to be having someone calling you out on your shit if it's even if it's just your partner um, hopefully you have a powerful healthy partner that is not complacent and is seeking an evolutionary path for themselves. Otherwise, you're going to end up feeling bitter toward them. Um, even if you're doing everything in your power to connect. Eventually, it will get very, very difficult. Um, there are some cool tricks to that, though. And there's never any reason to give up on anyone because it's really, um, it's when we think things aren't, possible that that the clarity shows up it's when you finally leave your partner that you know that you want to be with them it's it's these weird difficult struggles that we go through in order to to perceive our reality and the sexual energy is going to continue to become more and more exposed in that respect and uh, as we start to become more respectful and careful and light and um, kind and clear and loving toward ourself and others, then all of these things just magically evol evolve and heal. Um, but because we exchange power with somebody or we have a partner um, or those the types of expectations that exist um, around all of that, that's just sort of a delicate level in which most of us truly don't want to deal with the, the, the actual wounds and and so it 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 feels safer to just keep that part of our life a little bit unconscious it's sort of like yeah well that part you know yeah i can feel what you're saying joel but i'm you know i can't i can't that would be destabilizing to my family to bring up these concepts and it's true and and yet it's not true you know it's actually what you need to do in order to make sure that your kids are being raised in a uh, conscious home um, i was not receptive to this at, at certain points in my life and so i appreciate the struggle uh, how confronting this is 
it's not something to change overnight. It's something that you know, I'm just planting a seed. Um, but you're all beautiful. You all have power. You all have your sexual energy to reclaim. And when you do, you're, you will become more attractive. You'll become more um, energetically attractive, like abstractly. You, hopefully you can stop trying to make yourself look different than you really are by just really like, I mean, it's okay to wear makeup or do whatever you got to do, but start to start to transition away from fear and start to become more of a witch who is less focused on the physical and then your power will change your physical look and you'll actually get to look the way you want because you will have switched over into something more authentic which is actually truly more attractive what people think as the typical hot this is starting to shift a lot because of the, of the authentic energy is becoming what's truly desired and so a person without ego is actually the most attractive person you'll ever spend time with and, and you'll you'll actually start to become really attracted to them even if they're not what you would consider attractive in the physical sense it's um that that's what happened to me in in at a young age people are like i don't understand i I didn't think you were that cute. Now I hang out with you and I think, you know, it's all energy, you guys. It's, it's, it's like, how do, how do, we're all stuck in junior high and we're still, still trying to figure this out, right? It's all energy. Take care of your energy. Go inward. Reclaim your power. Get to know your sexual self and your desire and your passion and your longing and feel it. Feel the desire. Pursue it. Get to know what it is that you want. And and don't seek a way to have that resolved from somebody else unless they too are in balance. And then you can have the most incredible discovery process. Let go of the rules. Follow your intuition. Build build your all your juice save it preserve it care for it let it build and build and build let affection build between you two spend some time away so that the affection builds don't don't take up every minute don't don't maintain a routine be willing to break routine um really consider reevaluating everything in your life right now because whether you like it or not we're going through it you guys i know you feel it and uh i feel it really strong and i just i'm here sending love um uh, wish you all the best i hope everything goes well for you moving forward and i'll be back in a few days to share some more hope, hope everyone has a great day bye